In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at patterns, which will enable us to do pattern based sequencing, which in within Studio One Four. So let's just go ahead and get started with that. Now, how can we go about creating a pattern? We have a instrument track here and I've got an impact loaded up with one of the default kits. So with this track selected, I can come up to event and then choose insert pattern. We can also use control shift P. So that's what I'll do. And wherever we set our song position cursor is where that pattern will be inserted. So uh, control shift and P and we now have our pattern. At this point, I can double click and we open up the editor and we can begin laying down our drums. Now we're going to start in the upper left corner and just make our way across and cover each of the parameters within here. And this is actually probably going to be a two part series and we'll see what we can get through in this first part today. So to begin with, we have this button, this I button in the corner, and that's going to open and close the inspector. And within the inspector, we can actually click on this button to access our instrument that's tied to the particular pattern. In this case, our impact XT. We then have audition notes and that's on by default. So in this way, whenever we click, we just need to click once with our left mouse button to add notes into the sequencer. We can hear those play back. Additionally, we can audition the sounds by clicking on the name in this column here. If we don't want that, we can just deselect. And then when we add, those will not be auditioned as well as here. They'll be silenced when you click. Let's take those out and I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. We then have edit follows cursor. So if we had multiple patterns on our instrument track, as the song position cursor is playing back, say we move to our next pattern here, then our display will update to show each pattern as we move along the song timeline. Below that we have variations and this is where we can add variations to our patterns and create fills and just spice up the drum track a little bit and add in additional percussion or take parts out. So we can add variations by clicking on the plus button. This is going to create an entirely new variation. So let's go ahead and add a four on the floor beat here to our first pattern that we created. And I'm going to play that back. Okay. So now if we click the plus button, we're going to add an entirely new variation that is blank. Our four on the floor is gone. And let me go ahead and add some more in here. So this one's going to be a little bit different than the first. And that's how we can create an entirely new variation. And if we would like to change back to our first variation, for bar two, we can simply click on variation one here within the inspector. And now we return to that initial one that we created. We can also, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit, or actually I'm going to shift deb. Uh, let me be sure I select up top shift W to shrink that down a little bit. We have this selector at the bottom left corner that we can click and choose which variation will be used for this bar. And we have one other area here at the top where we can click the triangle and choose a variation from here. So you have a few different ways that you can choose which variation you're going to use at a, any particular bar with on your instrument track. Now let's come back to our inspector and I'm going to change this to variation two. Again, we can see we have those double our back. If we would like to duplicate a variation and then add on to that, then we would click on the center button here. I'll go ahead and click that. We now have variation three. We can see that that's active up in our range view of our song, as well as at the top of our editor. Now I'll come to the snare and let's add a couple snares and play that back. And so this is how you can begin building out your beat. So if we were to come to this button here that we already saw and change this to variation one, let's while this is selected, I'm going to press D on the QWERTY keyboard to duplicate that. And I'm going to duplicate that one more time. And in this center one here, let's change that to variation two, where we had those double hits there. And then on the third one, let's change that to variation three. So now when we play this back,
Okay, so you can see how you can go about building your beat in this way. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate variation three again. Now we have variation four. And I just did that to show that if we would like to move any, remove any of these variations, we would just click on the minus button and we can see variation four is gone. Now at the top, we can see we have pattern listed here. This is going to be a global name for all of our variations. So if I double click, let's call that drums. I'll press enter to take that, make that accepted. Let's come back here and we can see that our third variation now says drums in front of it. If I select the pattern two here and call that drums, our original pattern. And if you do this at the beginning, then you won't have to come back and select each one. But now we can see we have drums for our main name for each pattern. And then we have variation one, two, and three, and we can even go in further and, um, rename each variation as well. Okay, so you can see how this then works. At the top, we have our global name, drums, and then each variation, we can have its own individual name as well, just to help us further identify uh, the different vari uh, variations that we've created. And I'll take the position cursor back to the beginning here, and then next to the naming that we have there, we have these arrows to the left and right, and we can use this to edit the next pattern. So right now we have the rename three selected, and we can see that here in the inspector. If I click the right arrow, then we move on to rename two, and you can see that that's changed here as well, as well as in the sequencer. If I click to the right again, then we move on to rename three, clicking the left arrow moves back. And we already saw this selector here where we can choose which one we'd like to use. And at this point, we'll close out the inspector and move on to some of these other parameters. And next we have global controls for our step sequencer here. And the steps is going to set the length of our pattern and it's going to be set to 16 by default, 16 steps. And this is going to match up with our quantize, which is set to 16th notes as well. So we can see here for this pattern, it spans one bar and our quantized value is set to 16th notes. We can see we have 16 subdivisions in our bar and we have 16 steps. So these correspond to one another. And if you notice that the pattern here has four columns and these essentially represent each beat, one, two, three, and four, each of the four beats for our bar. We then have resolution and this controls the note value of each step. We then have swing and this is going to control the rhythmic relationship of pairs of steps. So at the default of zero, we're not going to have any swing, but as we increase the setting, the seconds. So if you look at these as pairs, this is one pair, another pair, another pair, and so on. So we've got two pairs for each beat. And as we increase the swing setting, the second step in each pair, so two, four, six, eight, and so on, that second step will move closer to the step on its right. Let's just fill in some hats to give a listen to how that works. Let's play that back. And let's turn our loop on. So now as I increase the swing, just even take note up above in our arrange view, these are actually going to move. So I'll click, hold and drag up. You can see those moving up above in the song and we can hear that the swing is being added. Going back down to zero. And that's the swing. And then next we have gate and this is going to control the length of each note. But this is also going to tie in with the setting on the pad within impact. Uh, let's get rid of these hats and these as well. So th we can hear how this sounds, this bass drum plus bass. And if I go ahead and play back and take the gate down, 
we can hear that it doesn't really change anything. And that's because of the particular mode that that pad is set to. So if we open up impact and we see BD and bass, that's here, it's set to one shot. So it's gonna play that whole sample all the way through. But if we change this to normal, and let's come back to our pattern, we can hear that that's been cut because our gate is at zero. But as we increase, we then introduce more of our sample in. And if we're gonna be a little bit limited here. So this is gonna be particularly useful for shorter one-shot drum sounds. I'm gonna open the impact back up. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. And I'm gonna change that back to the one-shot mode. Let's close the inspector. And finally we have accent, and this is gonna control the level of emphasis that's placed on accented notes. We then have a step record feature. So if I delete those out, we can activate the step record and wh whatever column we have selected is where the step record will begin at. So I'm gonna select this column one, activate the step record, and I'm going to press a pad on my external MIDI controller, and that's gonna fill in the pad or the step for that particular pad. If I press again, we fill in the immediately adjacent step. Now we can add a rest by clicking on this button here. And I've actually set up a hotkey, so the question mark is going to allow me to insert a rest so that I don't need to click in the editor. So if I, on my QWERTY keyboard, use the question mark, I can then move forward with a rest. I can then use my external controller to add a beat, another beat. I can add a snare, any sound that I'd like from the pads on my controller or the keys. I'm gonna turn off the step record and right click and let's clear out our pattern. Finally, at the top, we have these buttons that will allow us to quickly fill in steps so if I come back to the column one, this will insert a step at the beginning of each beat. The second one is going to insert on the first and third. And of course, this one here is going to fill them all in. This is going to clear. And if we come back to this one and add, actually, let's clear that. Let's use this one here. This one is going to move those, shift that lane forward. Let's clear that out. Now moving on in the upper left corner here, we have, we can choose between a melodic mode, which is gonna give us a piano roll. And we're gonna take a look at that in part two. Then we have our drum mode. And then moving towards the right, we have this little paper icon. And if we click on that, we have a few choices to hide, unuse, show default and show all. So let's fill in some more steps here. Let's get our snare. So these are the only lanes that have information. So if we would like to clean up this view a little bit, we can just click on that paper icon and hide unused. Then we only see the two lanes that have information on them that are actually programmed. We can choose to show default, which is what it's gonna be on by default. And what this means is that it's going to show all of the pads that have samples on them. So we have 16 lanes right now. And that's because if I open up the impact, we have six pads, 16 pads that actually have samples. If we come to these different banks, these are all empty. So they're not gonna show unless we choose the show all, then now all of those empty pads in the different banks are gonna show up here. Now I'm gonna take that back to the show default. We then have this wrench icon and when we click that, it's gonna allow us to do a little bit of editing here in this column. So all the way to the left, we can click hold and drag to change the position of these samples we can 
hide or show individual samples like so. So these are still going to be here while the edit mode is on. But once I click on the wrench icon and exit the edit mode, then those have been removed. So we can, if we'd like to see those again, we just click on the wrench icon, go ahead and click the dots and we've got those back. Now also we can rename the different pads. So if we take this BD plus base and rename that, let's exit here. Now, when we open up impact, it's going to change in impact as well. So we can see that this pad has been updated with the new name. Let's close out the impact and come back to our wrench icon. And that's pretty much everything that you can adjust within this area here. So we'll close that out. And I think we'll go ahead and wrap up here for part one. In part two, we'll go further into uh, a little bit more programming. And then we're going to take a look at the working with automation and the velocity, repeat, and probability. And the very last thing, actually, before we finish this up is just note that we have zoom control over in the bottom right hand corner of our editor. So we can zoom in horizontally by clicking and dragging here if we'd like a larger view. And then to the right of that, we can zoom vertically. Uh, but the way it's set right now, we're going to zoom in both horizontally and vertically because we have this lock icon that's active. So this is going to lock the horizontal and vertical zoom together when we use this particular control. We can see how that works. If we disengage that lock, then we're going to just zoom in vertically.